to another episode of It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. I like that our dances keep getting more energetic, but our faces are stoic the whole yeah, time. Yeah, I've always do drums. Well, yeah, like, you always. should. You should. Yeah, yeah. That was your thing. That was my um, thing. I feel out of place, so I wiggle. Thanks for watching, tuning in, listening, doing it, however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Kevin, what episode are we on? Uh, 91, guys. Hot, we are so close to the, the 100 mark. I'm excited. Almost said a, a, a dirty word. Can't do that. No, you can't do that. Um, guys, we do want to mention really quick, uh, we don't really advertise this, but we do have a Patreon. So if mm -hmm. you would like mm -hmm. to do go donate on a regular basis, you're welcome to. We are going to keep doing this no matter what, so please right. don't feel pressured. But if uh, that's something you want to do, if you just want to support the show directly, that's a good mm -hmm. way to do mm -hmm. it. Uh, and we'd greatly appreciate it. We are so, forever humbled. Yeah. Thank you guys are great. You ancestors protect me. Anyway, the schedule for today, guys. Uh, we have got our random card of the day kicking us off, of course. Uh, then we're going to go right. into a little bit, well, Will is going to go into a little bit, of the making of Dominaria and some of the decision-making right. that went behind uh, some of the cards um, based on articles that we have found and sort of researched into. Yep. We're also going to talk about magic surviving in this very ever-changing world that we are in for yeah. gaming. Um, and how what they're doing maybe to hopefully make sure that they survive and mm -hmm. things they could maybe do better. Uh, then of course we have our question of the week and we are not gonna do crack a packs because oh. circumstances did not allow for us to get Dominaria. So the stars did not align for this episode specifically. Yeah, so basically um, we're recording this like a week in advance, literally. Yeah. Um, and so we just can't get Dominaria yet. Uh, we've already opened what we had of it, so. Whoops. Yeah. My bad. I mean, hey. Happens. Um, so yeah, we're gonna <laughs> skip the crack back this week. Um, we do still understand we have to do a pie to my face video. Eventually. Eventually. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah. I don't know when. I don't know either. Um, <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah. All right, so kicking us off with our random car of the day in three, two, one. <laughs> oh, Rampant growth. Is it good? Yeah, that's, that's a good fine. card. Um, oh, that's right. I get rampant growth confused with the one that goes into your hand. I'm not sure which one that is. Um, Lay of the land. That might be it. Um, yeah, rampant growth, yeah. guys, is the good one. It is a sorcery <laughs> right. for one and a green. Search your library for a basic land card. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped and then shuffle your library. Mm -hmm. It's great uh, acceleration and green. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, there are constructed Super. decks that do see this, though generally it's mostly in like popper and stuff. Sure. Um, there are like fringe modern decks, I'm mm -hmm. sure, that play it, but um, it's not that good. It's just really, really good in limited, I would say. Um, um, right. It was good in limited. Um, <clears throat> if it has a place usually in a few standard decks that need mana fixing, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a little too slow for top tier modern decks. Um, it's not in standard anymore, let me say, obviously, sure. but when it was, it was it was fine. It um, also sees commander play, I should say. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it's, just, it's good mana fixing, yeah. gets you a basic. Uh, there's not a lot of downside except that it's sorcery. I think if it was instant, it'd be a little too good. Yeah. Um, Maybe. Yeah, but you did bring up a good point that it does get any basic land type, mm -hmm. so it does provide fixing for you, which is right. great. Um, right. Not just a forest, which some of the other cards do. So happy with this. Yeah, it's a good card. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Not much to say other than it's good. Yeah, so. it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, Will, why don't hey. you talk to us about the making of Dominaria? So dun, 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 dun. I always love when Magic gives us a little insight to how they design and develop their game. Mm -hmm. A little peek behind the curtain, get to see how the sausage is made, et cetera, et cetera. Um, that's yeah. a phrase, look it up. All right. There's, what's the rule? Um, two things people never want to know how get made, sausage and laws. Ah. That's the, okay. That's the, like the dad joke. Sausage and laws, kids. You never want to know how they get made. <laughs> oh. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> say it's a phrase. Uh, but they got, they, release these articles every time a new set comes out um, that just give us a little insight as to their decisions about certain cards. Yeah. Um, and some of my favorites um, really are callbacks to the lore mm -hmm. and kind of nods at the community. So one in particular uh, we'll talk about. I should have looked up his name. Uh, I'm doing it now. It's the crab. You know what I mean. It's the Homerid 3-3 three, three for 5 Harmer, in blue. Harmer, Harmer, that Harmer Mills Red. or something like that. Yeah, Hom Heimer... Heimerdinger. <laughs> Homerid, that's it. You you got it. I know. I don't think you would have remembered. It's so obscure. I know things. So how this guy <laughs> came about, um, the art, the flavor text, and his design. 
uh, all of it. A magic player and artist mailed Wizards of the Coast. I'm not suggesting you do this, but <laughs> he mailed them um, pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Like everyone on a specific team. Um, and everyone's like, what? A puzzle? Is this allowed? But when they realized that everyone got a puzzle, obviously they had to put it together. Put it together, saw this guy, saw that there was flavor text that this dude had written. Um, he's also an expert on crabs, apparently, he said. Um, <laughs> I don't think he should specifically. ever claim to be an expert on that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and then when they were drawing up on the whiteboard cards that they needed to include in the set, someone in the back was like, the Homerid. <laughs> Remember we got a puzzle? And there you go. And I do want to point out, Homerids were like an original tribe at one point. Oh yeah? They were, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Um, so it's not like the tribe itself was new. I'm fairly certain I'm not mistaken on that. Um, fact check me right now, just so I'm not... <laughs> but I'm fairly certain they were an original tribe in um, some of the original sets. Cat food. It is We knew it was going to go off, yeah. Um, anyway, so it it's sort of a callback to that, is what I thought. But obviously it's more than just that, which I think is really yeah. cool. Yeah, yes. here's a... Okay, shh. I'm not bad. A I, card named Homerid. <laughs> a summon Homerid. The question... It's from like Fallen Empires, right? Yeah. My only question, Kev, is how many are there? There's only a handful and they are all terrible. I'm pretty sure. Uh, There's really not that many that are like useful. I think they're all just Homerid. I think that's their name. It's just a card? I think it's one card. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, oh, wait, no, no, no. Here's It says tribal deck right there. Yes. So maybe... On the fly episode. Hot red deck deck. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> no. For commander, no less. Oh, God. This uh, is we'll what get we into should that. be doing yeah, off episode. Anyway, we'll get into that later. I um, thought that was just a callback to that originally, but when you told me about this article, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah. That somebody would take the time to make that. Right? Isn't that sweet? That's cool. Um... There, the other thing, I encourage you to go read the article. It's really fascinating just to see how everything comes together. Um, the the two other things that stuck out in my mind the most was, I like, I'm a nerd, right? I've read Lord of the right. Rings. I read all sorts of stuff like that. What? Diagnosed? Yeah. Are you terminal? I think so. We'll have it forever. Guys, we're not going to make it to episode 100. Um, it's just not going to happen. I didn't want it to come out on, on the podcast like this, but... I mean... Since we're here, though! So, as... <laughs> whatever that bit was. Um, oh, no. a, as a nerd, I have a thing for, like, historic weapons in in stories, in lore. You really? know, every legend... Yeah, every legend has something, right? Every yeah. myth has got some sword. Um, heck, Luke's lightsaber in Star Wars is That's like... One. Ooh, ooh. Um, yeah. <laughs> what if they made that noise not the normal noise? <laughs> <laughs> you've seen the you've seen the um the vine where it's just Owen Wilson. Yeah. Saying, wow, yeah, wow, yeah. wow, 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 wow. Oh no, it's a sword. Um, but anyway, <laughs> Harry Potter's got it. Lord of the Rings has it. There's a magic weapon of great power you uh, need to find to beat the bad guy. Yeah. Um, but sometimes the weapons are wielded by the bad guys. So there's the Black Blade in Dominaria's yeah. set. Black Blade um, was a sword in in a story from 1994 mm -hmm. um, linked to magic. It was, a, it was a story written about the magic set at the time. Um, and the Black Blade was this dude's sword. It stole people's life essence. Good. And as a card, uh, he got powerful based on the amount of lands you have. Cool. There was a callback in Plain... Planescape? Plain Chase? Plain Chase? Maybe. I don't know. It may be Plain Chase. Uh, it's Plain Chase, definitely. Okay. Final answer. Um, <laughs> in Plain Chase, this guy was the heir to Black Blade, and he was a 4-4 four, four for two colorless and two black, mm. and his power mm. and toughness were also influenced by the amount of lands you have. We get the Black Blade, the artifact in Dominaria. Mm -hmm. You equip for three on a legend, seven on any other creature, though. Cool. Uh, and their power and toughness increase by the amount of lands you have. So it's a callback, um, and I thought it was really cool. Yeah. The last one that I thought was just sweet. Kev, you know how I feel about demons and magic, right? I do. And I have a feeling I know where this is going. Ben's lock. Yeah. <laughs> the Bells and lock. Bells and lock. <laughs> I like demons, don't know how to say their name. Um, <laughs> might be for the best. So, so Bells and lock. 
Ben's in lock? Bells in lock. I'm going to call him Ben. Um, I feel like now I'm saying it wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Bells and Lock. <laughs> Bells and Lock. <laughs> I'm like almost positive. The scary demon from Dominary, who's also the main antagonist in the story, if you're into, yeah. the, if you're into the story. Uh, he is Liliana's fourth and final demon, Yeah. by the way, to kill. She's gotten Gristlebrand. She's gotten... <laughs> and she got... Um, <laughs> the guy from Mama Cat. Yeah. Do you remember who I'm talking about? No. He's the big tutor demon. Um, pay two life, search for oh, uh, the 9-9. Nine, nine. The 8-8. Eight, eight. The Rosaketh, that's Is right. Is it Rosaketh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rosaketh, Gristlebrand, and uh, now <laughs> Bells and Lock. What was the other one? I forget. <laughs> oh, do you know what it said? Um, is it Ravnica? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I don't think that was right. I don't think it's Ravnica. Hold on. I feel like it's not Ravnica. I have a story about Bells and Lock 2 that I actually dig, but it's lore-based. Good. Hold on. Yeah. It's It's got it listed. Um, oh, that was it, wasn't it? Uh, Kothafed. Oh, yeah. The Soul Hoarder. Right. No. Yeah. This is from... Um, Origins, right? Right. Yeah. Right, because it was their first demon. Right. Duh. From Origins. Silly people. This is a great episode. Um, but he's her fourth and final demon, which is really sweet. Um, yeah. And I am interested as a lore junkie to go and see where this goes. Yeah, so because um, she's gonna kill him. <clears throat> I mean, that, yeah, that's the she always does. That's, she needed the the Gatewatch's help the last time, but um, whatever. So speaking in terms of lore, I've actually kind of looked into the first chapter of the lore a little bit and read, I believe, all of it. Um, I need to go back and finish the other chapters though. But basically, um, what I thought was really funny is mm. obviously they shifted planes into Dominaria, mm -hmm. and it was Gideon, Nyssa, Chandra, and uh, Liliana. And they were like, where the F is Jace? And he's off by himself. All the, if you don't know, all the Ixalan stuff that's been going on is technically at the exact same time as the Dominaria stuff that's happening now, just mm -hmm. so you're aware. Um, anyway, what basically happened was Liliana was like, hey, I brought you guys here Wink, wink, by the way, Belzenlock is here. You guys should totally help me kill him. And then Nissa's like, good. no, screw this crap, I'm out. Yeah, Nissa left. Nissa straight up just was like, nah, I'm done. So she left to go protect her people. Um, kind of makes sense. Does make sense. Uh, Chandra was also like, yo, I am out. I need to get stronger and protect. He, She followed Nissa's. Uh, lead there and then Gideon is stabbed and so he's sort of out of commission <laughs> Gideon for is stabbed he is stabbed <laughs> so uh Liliana and Gideon are like on the plane doing all their stuff I haven't again I haven't read too much past this but what I think is really funny about Bells and Locke specifically mm. is he's like this big cultist leader everybody on Dominaria is like terrified of him and all this stuff because they heard all these stories turns out all these stories were things that other like creatures or demons or like bad people in the story have done and he's just taking credit for it <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny to me oh um, that's if great. you watch the like uh i think it's chasing the planes or something like that mm -hmm. where it's like an interview style and they talk about bells and lock a little bit they kind of touch on it where he's just like yeah you know like lord of the pit did all this terrible stuff uh, yeah, Bells and Lock saying he did it, and like all just everything. Bells and Lock is like, yeah, I'm a bad a. Come fight me, bro. And then oh my god, yeah, <laughs> he's just like, like the Wizard of Oz, man. Yeah, basically. Don't it's look really behind funny. the flaming curtain. It, I think it's hilarious because he oh. kind of isn't actually as cool as people think he is. I think he's a good card in the plane. Yeah, he is a good card. Um, but yeah, well, interesting stuff going on with Dominaria yeah, right now. It's very cool. Um, the weather lights back, obviously. Yeah. That's neat. Also, Karn doesn't have a gender. Do you know that? I've always called Karn a he. I mean, he's a golem. All right, he's genderless. Yeah, I mean, I've naturally, I guess I always say he. But yeah, interesting. Just those, you know, um, social conditioning. <laughs> Built right up in there. <laughs> I do love all the callback cards, though. Stuff like the weather light is really cool. There are so many. The yeah. whole crew of the weather light that's still alive is here. Yes. Uh, Squee. Squee. You know how we feel about yes. Squee. Squee is the man. He got gifted, cursed, <laughs> yeah. whatever. All of the above. He's just not smart, but <laughs> he can't die, which is like the best combination. So cool. I just like, a bunch of goblins, like, 
need to test out a new bomb, see if it's safe. Let's just have Squee hold it for a little while. Yeah, see what happens. What's the worst that can happen, man? <laughs> <laughs> He's like Deadpool, but a goblin. Yes, literally yes. And less, I, less guns. I really like that Squee is back. I love that all these cards are back, because honestly, and I've said it a, a few times already, this is the first standard set since probably Return to Ravnica that I've really been excited about. Hmm. Um, I Return enjoyed some sets, but like, Nothing like this. I think there's so much more with Dominaria. The power level is kind of amazing. It's very good. Um, um, Standard is going to get super uh, super sweet. Yeah, Parks and I are yeah. talking about Bant Aggro. Um, it's looking nice. Yeah, That's there's a I'm lot of really good stuff out there. I thought I was playing Control for a while, but I think Bant Aggro no, is the No, I way think with Dominaria in, it, it promotes just like big creature, legendary stuff, yep. and all that. A lot of so, synergy there. A lot of cool stuff. Um, but moving forward, we do wanted to talk about, and just kind of a brief discussion, um, magic surviving with the future of gaming kind of going digital with everything in a lot mm -hmm. of fashions. Um, there's now just, obviously, there's plenty of just online card games that work out pretty well, but how is magic going to stay relevant moving forward? Um, and I actually think they're already making strides to make this happen, uh, which I'm super stoked to see. I know Arena is on the fence for a lot of people, Will. Um, but having yeah. played it, I, I was on the fence too, but having played it and actually kind of started enjoying it a little bit more, um, I do think that there is a future there and there's a market there for standard people. I don't like yeah. that it doesn't have the breadth of MTGO. Sure. Um, that's my gripe because again, I'm not a standard player, so it's cool to play standard a little bit, but I'd rather have other formats um, and just okay. older cards in general. So. You know, that's a little, a bit, a bit of a miss for me. I think it's kind of weird that they're going with two online platforms now with yeah. MTGO and Arena. Like, that's just, marketing-wise, I just don't really get why that's a thing. Right, I feel um, like that's strange as well. But I do understand that there is a lot of effort that would go into moving MTGO and Arena into one consolidated thing. Right, I mean, it, it doesn't make sense just in terms of an execution. Like... How do you do it smoothly, cleanly? Right. How do you appease both uh, audiences? Even though Arena just started, and it's yeah, not yeah. even technically it's in beta still. So. Right. So, um, um, but you do have a large <laughs> following with MTGO. Yeah. Heck, you get players who qualify for pro tours off of MTGO. Yeah. It's not, not. Shout out to yeah. Genji. Yeah. It's not. It's not going anywhere. That being said, how does that stay relevant and stuff yeah. like that is is the question. No, um, it's, and I think that's the hard part because. Mm -hmm. um, you know, MTGO, if you play MTGO, you know it feels very out of date um, and very old yes. school. Um, Although, I mean, I've said, I said this to you before the podcast, playing Arena, the moment I did, yeah. I was so lost. I was too at first. I think they could have done a better job explaining the, it's things. Just, the UI is just a little bit it. confusing. Like, yeah. Hearthstone's so simple. And Arena feels a lot like Hearthstone, but yeah. there's so much more that's happening that you need to be able to know. And I didn't know when I had priority. Yeah, that's, I, didn't, I didn't know how to end my turn. That's 100% the struggle with going online with Magic, right. is that there are so many little detail things that go up that make up a turn of Magic. Mm -hmm. And so, and priority passing back and forth and stuff like that, like you said, Hearthstone doesn't really have that. It's, it's like word. they've got phases, but they don't really have <laughs> priority or anything right. like that. It just you take your turn and then it's the next person's. So a right. little bit of an easier form for them. Definitely. So Definitely. online magic has, I think some work to do, but I do like the way that they are heading um, in some fashions. I think they've got some work to do in terms of getting yeah. one platform together. Right. Um, so Kevin mention, tell, tell these fine people uh, what they're testing right now. Yeah, so um, I mentioned this uh, last week in the weekly ramble, but if you missed it, basically what's going on, uh, Wizards decided to test code cards in mm -hmm. specifically New Zealand, which seems like a random pick, but I'm glad that they're testing it somewhere to get bugs out first and then moving everywhere else. Um, essentially, if you don't know what these code cards are, if you don't play Pokemon, I guess, Pokemon's done this for a long time where you buy a pack in a store somewhere, mm -hmm. Inside that pack is a little code card that has the code on it. You can type it into the online client and actually get a pack of whatever you bought at the store. Um, so it'll be the same set and it's different cards and all that stuff, but it's random. So the idea is basically you get kind of a two for one in terms of value that you're getting right. physical cards plus online equity. Um, and I think it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah, I think, this is, I think this is the step they need to make to ensure magic survives. So, I think it's a big one, yeah. 
Now this, I mean, it's a great way to keep standard relevant, um, to push people to arena. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's the perfect move. With everything going digital, um, it's a great step. We might even see arena on consoles eventually. Yeah, Who knows? maybe so. They've tested <laughs> numerous Magic games for consoles, and all of them have kind of been really bad. Yeah, right? the biggest one was like Duels, I guess. But I Duels think so. was really, I mean, there was actually kind of a following with Duels, but it just was not very good, I didn't think. Mm -mm. No. Um, um, and I'm worried that Arena is going to fall into that pitfall of Duels, where it's like, oh, it's kind of cool, you can play, it's free to play, kind of. Um, and all that stuff, but then it just sort of dies out eventually. I think doing this right. is a good way to keep it from doing that because people exactly. are going to buy physical cards regardless. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody does that. So like, um, you're gonna get code cards, which means you're gonna wanna open up your packs online, which keeps you playing online. Mm -hmm. It's just, mm -hmm. it, I think it's a good move for them. I, I think it's smart. Yeah, I agree. Um, a lot of, <sighs> Old players will tell you not to buy as many packs, to buy singles for decks you want to make. That's mm -hmm. true. That's a great idea, and it's a yeah. great way to save your money, really, um, because you kind of gamble with packs, right? You do. But packs are fun. They are they're fun. exciting. Uh, Wizards makes a lot of money from packs, mm -hmm. um, so they're not going away ever. <laughs> so this is a great way to utilize them, I think, for the longevity yeah. of the company. Um, but it's exciting. It's a cool change. It is. It's I a think. good change. It's it's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. This was something that code cards have been brought up a million times when they announced Arena that they should yeah. be doing this. Um, when they first announced it, they didn't seem to at least have plans to do it. But they I'm glad were, that they're moving in that yeah. direction. They weren't vocal about it. I don't right. think they said they wouldn't. Right. They I just, just think they sort didn't of talk didn't about talk it about, really. about it. Right. Um, I know it was brought up to them, but they didn't really go much further than that. Right. So. Uh, yeah, this should be in effect. Hopefully by the next, by the core set coming out this summer is the plan um, from what I've heard. I know it's kind of hearsay at this point, so we're not sure. Um, definitely by the time it hits Alpha ver uh, Alpha State, we will, or we should, Excuse me. I have to say we should, uh, have, go have code cards in there. So yeah. I'm excited about that. I, I am great. too. Um, I'm very happy they're making this move. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it. Good that's, stuff. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right, so question of the week time. Uh, last week, we basically asked you guys to let us know what kind of bad luck stories you had. If you missed <laughs> the last episode, uh, it was all about luck versus skill, right? Uh, which is a fundamental part of magic and something that we all fall victim to occasionally, <laughs> and it sucks, but... Amen. Uh, I think what's fun about it is if you talk about it after the fact, you can kind of make light about it and just enjoy the funny stories. And I'm not gonna go in and actually read everybody's story because there were actually a lot of them. Thank you guys. Uh, but a lot of people get screwed on lands a lot. I will just say that. Happens. Happens all the time. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, oh yeah. yeah. Literally like everybody was saying, yeah, I just didn't draw lands. Like that was the takeaway from every story basically. It happens, man. So, uh, shuffle better. Like yeah. honestly, that's when I, I kept getting either flooded or no lands in a bunch of games and it was because I was shuffling strangely. You got plenty of time to shuffle in between matches, so yeah. riffle, pile, do it a bunch. Do all of them if you want. Um, that's the best way to do it. I think the minimum number of times you're supposed to shuffle for full randomization is like seven. Yeah. Of like the riffle shuffle. Sure. Um, I don't know that for sure, but I think I heard that somewhere. So do that's that. That sounds mathy. Yeah. It sounds right. Technical and stuff. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> moving into this uh, week's question of the week. What is your favorite card in Dominaria? Obviously we have the full set out. We've gotten, some of us have gotten to play with it a little bit. Now that you have, uh, we just want to know what's your favorite card so far. Um, mm -hmm. There's a lot of good ones to choose there's, from. This set is so good. Do you have a favorite card so far? Um, It's between Teferi. Yeah. Honestly, it might just be Teferi. Um, I'm, ex so I'm excited for the 5-5. Um, the five five. For three, whose name escapes me. The five four for three. Yeah. Seal Leaf Champion. Yeah, that's the one. Only because Mono Green. Mono Green Stompy is a thing now. It's been brewing. It makes me excited. Yeah. Um, I like to be able to really play sweet. just basics if I want. Because yeah. you can do that. It's um, awesome. And the memorials you can put in there and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Sure. I mean you get um, you get a bunch of stuff. Um I think it'd be really fun. Uh <laughs> and um Collected Company hits it, so Yeah. Woo. It's kind of broken. A <laughs> uh, little bit, a little bit. So um, <laughs> it's kind of between those, more so the champion, more so for the implication. 
Um, but Teferi's just a really good plane So blocker. good. Um, I think he's going to uh, hit standard like a baseball bat. Yeah. Uh, to kind of combat the <laughs> the slower mid-range decks. Like mm-hmm. you get your, your blue-black control. Um, that's going to evolve a little bit. Mm-hmm. It's definitely in t- going to take a backseat soon. Yeah. But... Um, I think, and I read an article on this basically uh, like two days ago or something like that, that mm. essentially what's going on is what happens every time a new set comes into standard, which is aggro decks tend to be at the forefront mm-hmm. uh, for constructed play for a few months usually, mm-hmm. and then control catches up. And I think once control catches up, Teferi is going to be the card to have, um, if I had to guess. Sure. Uh, I do want to say what's really interesting is Karn, which is probably one of the most, my favorite cards I would say. Uh, is like not really seeing any deck lists yet. And what I think is yeah. fun, I mean, it makes sense, but like so many people were so <clears throat> stoked about Karn and like he's going to be the best card in the set. And I'm not saying he's not good because I think he will have his place. There is going to be a deck with him, but it's not any of the decks that we're going to see right off the bat. I mean, it's a mid range deck, right? It's a mid range deck. He gets, he gets you card advantage on four when you wouldn't have it otherwise. So if you. If you can build your board state in three turns enough that you're safe, yeah. put out a cheap threat, take some of theirs maybe, maybe counter a thing of theirs. If you are in an advantageous position where you can put a resource out there that just nets you more cards, because mm-hmm. he doesn't really do much. He gets you yeah, cards. he That's nets it. you cards. I think That's what it. the deck that would break him the most would be a like Traxos deck, the big 7-7 seven, seven for like mm, four. Okay. That untaps when you cast a historic spell. Right. So it would be artifact based. True. Sure. Uh, with like splashes, splashes, excuse me, for like removal and maybe some card draw or something like that. Sure. Permissions maybe. Sort of in the same vein, a mid range kind of style deck where you're just like trying to play out Traxos and then Karn just helps you get there. Um, mm. He can also spit out like a giant artifact creature. If is it historic to. spell or is it legendary spell that, for um, Traxos? I'm not 100% positive. Because I thought it was legendary. I think it's historic, but I could be wrong. Um, either way, that card is really good, just so you know. I mean, I'm going to start making that deck if... Deck sounds sweet, right? <laughs> if it's historic. It is a historic spell, which is any Every artifact. artifact. Um, yeah. I think that could be a way to go. Seems pretty sweet, right? <laughs> Well, <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. Uh, Andrew and I were talking back and forth um, about a Traxos deck. Traxos, yeah. He wants Traxos just to flame. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's awesome. Dude, that's actually not bad. Right? Just, an, uh, just picture making clones of Traxos and throwing them. And throwing them. Mm-hmm. Or playing out a bunch of artifacts mm-hmm. with Traxos. Mm-hmm. Um, running fling in the deck for the artifact that you make off of Karn. Because that could be even bigger than Traxos. Guys, we're gonna make a deck. We have playing <laughs> standard right now. We do. Yeah, yeah, that can be a thing. Yeah. Well. All right. <laughs> I found where we're gonna put Karn. <laughs> that seems really good. It seems it seems gimmicky. It seems like it's gonna work really well, like for like one weeks. out of five games. <laughs> and Honestly. then somebody's gonna figure it out and be like, oh. All right. There's nothing to figure out. You kill Traxos, kill Karn. Well, plus done. there's like so much artifact hate right now, isn't there? Um, By force or whatever, destroy X target artifact. There's a bunch. I mean, there's enough that that would. Yeah. There's always artifact just sideboard hate. Sideboard right? out it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Sideboard it. <clears throat> anyway, yeah. I mean, he himself is an artifact, so the hate hits him. That's true. You yeah. know? That sucks. Yeah, but you get that match I one. Mean, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so as we said at the beginning of the episode, we don't have any packs. Sorry about it. Next week, we will have yep. Dominaria, though, so do not worry. We do have to pick goal cards. Um, should we pick them now, or should we pick them in the next episode? Mm, I want the champion. I already know, so you can pick it now. Mm. I have to pick something at rare, because otherwise... Oh, that's no. true. That's true, because I did pick that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold off. I'm going to okay. look and see what I can find. Okay. Um, there's a lot of good stuff, so I just have to sift through all oh, of it yeah. at this point. There's so much um, good stuff. But yeah, so we will be back next week, of course, with the Kraken Packs and all that jazz. But until then, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much for sticking around. Make sure to like and comment down below if you enjoyed this episode. Make sure to subscribe uh, if you would like to stay up to date on all of our content. We should have a giveaway going on right now also. Yep. But because we're recording this early, 
I have no clue what the giveaway is. <laughs> so, it's, we're, do we, whatever the giveaway says to do. <laughs> yes, it's there. Um, it was there probably Monday. Or yeah. Something. Or Sunday, one of those days. Man, whatever. Whatever. Just, it's going to be for YouTube. You want, subscribe and put hashtag whatever I told you to put. <laughs> and that'll be it. <laughs> Eloquent. This is going to be good. <laughs> Eloquent. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, we're going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name's Will. And this has been It Resolves. <laughs>